Selamat siang. In the previous video, we explored a strategy for building an asynchronous binary counter. That strategy could be extended to any number of bits, 3, 14, 16, any number. As a result, those counters can count through any whole power of 2, such as 8, 16, 32, and so on. But sometimes we want to count to other numbers. A very common one is 10, because we are used to working in the decimal system. In this video, we will see how to accomplish that with a standard asynchronous decade counter design, and then see how multiple decade counters can be cascaded. The first thing to keep in mind about a decade counter is that it doesn't count to 10. It does count through 10 unique numbers, but the first number is 0. So, it counts 0 through 9 and then recycles back to 0. There are many strategies to accomplish this count. One is shown here, using T flip-flops and a few logic gates. The basic structure is similar to what we saw with the binary counter. Each flip-flop is always in toggle mode, due to this high signal on the T inputs. And the count is managed by controlling when a negative pulse is sent to each of the clock ports. As before, the least significant bit, which I'm here calling A0, toggles on every clock cycle. We accomplish this by feeding the system clock directly into it. But past this point, the remaining flip-flops don't necessarily toggle when the prior flip-flop drops low. How should we determine when the other flip-flops are allowed to toggle? By looking at the required count sequence. This table shows just the bottom half of the count because that is where our focus needs to be. Specifically, we need to correctly manage the recycling point, which is the change from 9 to 0. Even at this point, A0 toggles, which is why the system clock can feed straight into that flip-flop. But A1 shows a new behavior. At all other points, A1 toggles when A0 drops high to low. For example, in this change from 7 to 8. But when recycling from 9 to 0, A0 does drop high to low, and A1 remains the same. This logic gate setup handles all the cases for A1. For the bulk of the count, A3 equals 0, which means that this NOT gate outputs 1. And so, when A0 drops high to low, this AND gate output also drops high to low. That is the negative pulse which tells A1 to toggle. But for that unique change at the end, A3 equals 1, which means that this AND gate is forced to output low regardless of what A0 is doing. A held low value means no negative pulse, which means no change in A1. Thus, the zero remains a zero, as it should. Fortunately, A2 needs no special changes. Its pattern of toggling only when A1 drops high to low works for the bulk of the count, and also at the recycling point, since A1 doesn't change there. So, output A1 feeds straight into the clock port, for A2. A3 does need logic gates for determining its times to change. In fact, for the entire count, there are only two times when A3 must toggle, after 7 and after 9. This OR gate will drop from high to low after count 7, because A2 drops high to low. Similarly, this AND gate will drop low after count 9, because A0 drops low, which in turn causes the OR gate to drop low. These negative pulses are the triggers that cause A3 to toggle. This decade counter structure is nice, because it is similar to our previous binary counters. There are a couple drawbacks, however. The first is that the glitches will be more exaggerated because these new logic gates increase the propagation delays. 
The second is that this pattern is not easily extended to higher counts, like 20 or 50. Worse yet, the design process to build this is not exactly formal, so those extensions get tricky. However, if your job is simply to build an asynchronous decade counter, you can take this or one of several other standard designs. A useful thing we can do with a decade counter, or any size counter, is to cascade them to count in higher orders of magnitude. This circuit features three decade counters condensed into device symbols. Notice how the rightmost, or least significant, counter cycles quickly through its count. Then, when it leaves 9 and recycles back to 0, the middle counter increases by 1. In a similar fashion, when the middle counter recycles, the most significant counter increases by 1. Let me increase the simulation speed so we can see those changes more quickly. It is clear that this functions just like how we count with decimal numbers. After 9 comes 10. After 99 comes 100. After 999 should come 1000, but we limited the circuit to 3 digits, so the count recycles back to 0. What is the reasoning behind this setup? Recall that these counters are negative edge triggered. When the rightmost counter recycles, a 3 drops high to low. That sends the negative pulse to the middle counter and triggers it to change. Naturally, that same pattern connects the middle counter to the leftmost counter. Instead of decimal, do you want to count in hexadecimal? Then just use counter devices that go 0 through 15, like we saw last video. Do you want to count in sexagesimal? That's just the fancy name for base 60, like we use in clocks. Well, you could build a counter that goes 0 through 59, or you could link a base 10 counter to a base 6 counter. In all of these cases, follow the same strategy of using the MSB of the smaller counter as the clock signal for the larger counter.